Hey everybody, this is Denny. And this is James from TDB, uh, bringing you guys episode number 110. So welcome back, guys. Awesome. Hi, um, we're Crimson Lotus too. I'm Glenn. Uh, I'm Lamu. So what, what tea do we have today? So we've got one from, uh, from Changtai. It's from 2005. This one's been uh, humid stored in Guangdong for the past uh, decade. So that's 10 years. It's been a little while. Uh, this, this is one of, the, uh, one of the earliest chunk cakes that we've, that we've sold. We've been selling this one for, uh, for a year now. Um, this one's really special. The first time we had it was in, uh, in Lijiang, a little tiny tea shop. And uh, the guy was selling them for like 400 bucks a cake. When we tried it, when we tasted it, he was brewing it in, a, in, in an I Ching tea pot. And it had already been brewed probably 22 times yeah. by then. And we, that's when we came in. We tried some other stuff, didn't like it. And he's like, all right, we'll just try this. He's just like, I was brewing it this morning. And even after 22 steepings, it was just, it, it was like my eyes were completely open to what Shung Puer could be this was this was the one tea that really just did it for me um and so we made sure that we wanted to get as much of it as possible factory yeah yeah so lama was very friendly at the tea markets she quickly uh became really good friends with the manager uh the changtai shop and um yeah it took us to the factory we got to see where the stuff's made um this one's really interesting so they call it they call it top of the clouds um, which is kind of a, a play in Chinese, having because Yunnan is the southern southern cloud region, so kind of like top of the clouds means like the best from Yunnan. It's kind of like a little play on words there. Uh, it's got it's a blend of fifteen different mountains, which is which is pretty awesome. Um, the Changtai blenders, these like master blender guys, have been doing this their entire life. They have really good skill. I have no idea like what mountains were in there whether it's Gushu or not, anything like that, and it doesn't matter, because whatever they, what they did to create what they created is something, um, something awesome. It is a little heavily compressed, so we'll give it a two, uh, two quick washes. And so, Glenn was telling me before the episode mm -hmm. began that uh, this is like, has been one of the staples in the sort of the Crimson Lotus Pure stock, but uh, the storage of it has changed. You've got a couple different stocks of it, and yeah. this particular one is Guangdong storage, um, which is of course a little bit uh, more humid than Kunming. Yeah, the first one we tried was uh, uh, was had been dry stored in Kunming for well, it would have been nine years because we found it last year. Yeah, but we only bought like three ton at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, then we went back, and. Uh, they don't, you know, they want to sell us much higher price. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, we can't, we can't, we think it's not reasonable, so we didn't. Every single time we've tried to buy more of this tea, it's been like 10% more expensive. It's been, hmm. it was the, it was like the largest lesson that we learned last year. When you find a tea that you like, buy as much of it as you possibly can. Because when you want more, it will either be gone or it'll be more expensive. So... Um, we, once we found, uh, uh, another good source for it, we, uh, bought as, uh, bought as much as we could, so, so we've definitely got enough, uh, enough to go, go around for now. Um, like I said before, it's, it is really heavily compressed, and so I just want, I want to give it two, uh, two quick washes yeah. so that it opens up for us. Totally. Um, we generally, when we have a choice, when we compress our own stuff, we try and hit a mix somewhere around 60% from like stone compression to mm -hmm. iron compression and um, we think that's a really good mix it helps things age just a little bit quicker but for this one it's uh, works out super awesome comes up nice and dark here yeah really nice let you guys smell this yeah. here um, yeah no this one's been really mm. this one's been really successful uh, a lot of people really really like this one it was featured in a SeriousEats.com article, which is uh, pretty exciting for us. Mm. Yeah, this TH really fast. It smells great. All right, let's see here. Yeah, let's uh, let's try some of this one now. Cool. 
And in terms of ratios, the amount of tea that we're using, the Gaiwan, what so do you think, ish? This for was a, this was a, I went with a, I went with a 10 grams for this, the 220 gram Gaiwan. Okay. Um, I really just kind of wanted, I know our tea stations are short here, so I wanted to give it a little extra, yeah. a little extra, a little extra punch. But mm -hmm. um, this is also another very generous one, which will uh, go a very, very long way. And this will work well with less leaf yeah. and more leaf. Yeah. Usually when I brew this, I actually brew this one in a, a nice Yiching teapot that got we've it. got for, for aged stuff. Mm. And it works out, uh, works out really nice. And how do you think this tea compares to uh, those 2003 tools from Changtai? So it's real, it's real similar, um, but those 2003s have just probably 20, 25% more of that like humid essence to it. Those mm -hmm. were aged in, um, those were aged in Menghai. They're, those, those ones are really nice. Um, this one will be there in a couple of years, I'm, I'm sure. Hmm. Cheers. Cheers. It's definitely light still, but it has a really wonderful sweet fruity front to it. Yeah. Um, it's really it is thin though still. Exactly what I was gonna say. I think the, the compression is still coming apart um, <laughs> for the tea. Um, there we go. So I think it's probably gonna thicken up a little bit. Um, yeah. It's nice. I think it, I'm tasting a lot different flavors than the nose offers. I feel like I think I was expecting to get what I would call kind of like a syrupy. Um, mm. Pencil shavings meets plum dime a tap <laughs> sort of vibe. Uh, I know it sounds really weird, but I just went for it. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah, give me another little shot. But it's very, um, it's got a nice, sweet uh, front to it. Again, at least now, we're, you know, we're just getting started with this tea, so it's hard to say yep. how it's going to go. But It's got sort of this slight fruit astringent character to it, so though I that would also cause me to believe that it'll probably continue to age and some of that stuff will smooth out over time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this one gets a lot of uh, the uh, has his apricot in it. So exactly. Just, mm -hmm. That's what I was gonna yeah. dance throughout yeah. every steeping. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of those lighter um, stone fruit sort of vibes. Mm -hmm. Apricot, maybe a little bit of uh, peach a bit of peach in there. Yeah, really nice. So yeah, like I said, the first time I ever tasted this was after it had already been steeped 22 times, and like for the next four hours as we we're driving out of Lija, like every time I cleared my throat, you could still like you could still taste it. I mean, it was just um, last a long time. Last a long, it's awesome. Long time. I rarely actually even get that far in my <laughs> steepings these days with it. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, 20 times is a lot of steepings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and. For you folks, yeah, would this be something that you guys would drink on a daily basis? Um, I save this for myself. I save this one for for special occasions. Cool. Um, so for the folks out there watching, if you wanted to pick this up, maybe this would be more of a share with your tea aficionado friends. Yeah, I mean, we sell it for uh, we sell it for sixty bucks, and that's I mean, two hundred fifty gram. It's a two hundred fifty gram cake. That's I mean, that's bad. that's that's not it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people's budgets, it kind of. Uh, Mm -hmm. Kind of like it's getting it's getting to that point where they got to really think about it. But it's um. But so as a not to detract from the price point yeah. aspect of it, but I'll say that hypothetically price didn't play a, a a role. Would this be a daily drinker for you folks or not? Even um, so? I, it's it's really hard because like my, our concept and idea of daily drinker is probably entirely different than most people. Sure. Most of my daily drinking is um. Is all like somewhat research-based, yeah. okay. right? So I'm, I'm basically doing homework. I'm, I'm trying out how other cakes have aged. I'm tasting new cakes to see if it's something that we want to carry. And so my daily drinking habits are All completely the place. different. Got it. I can be drinking who knows what yeah. um, on any given day. That's kind of how my, <laughs> my drinking has ended up going as well. Yeah. But I, could, I think this would definitely fit. For people's uh, budgets, did fit this tea. I think it could definitely fit the sort of daily drinker category. It's definitely so too. Uh, very. I, I, don't, I don't think it's difficult to drink at all. Um, it has some nice age, so it's not going to be hard on the stomach. Um, so uh, I think I, I could definitely see it being a daily drinking cake. I brewed this one just a just a scratch longer. It's a little bit more a uh, little bit more astringency definitely. in this one. A little mm -hmm. bit more fruit too. Yeah, yeah. and I I get. 
a little really subtle underlying smokiness um, that's that's it's almost coming out mostly out of the aroma, frankly, but um, mm. it's nice. The thing I like the most about this is is you, you rarely see well modern day cakes, and there's nothing against against them for this, but um, there seems to be a definite focus on like big things and big ideas like this cake is like only from like 500 year old trees and it only has this and that's really cool because you get a really good essence of what that is but mm -hmm. sometimes I think that the overall experience can sometimes lack if you're just you know chasing these um chasing these statistic kind of things right mm -hmm. um whereas something like this where like these people obviously knew what they were doing these master blenders at Chang Tai that have been doing this their entire life and they can take material that may not be the best material but by analyzing what it is can create something that's larger than the sum of its parts um which is one we were really excited to find from um uh guming shang this one that we got on our site this year it's just 2004 material it's real simple 60 to 80 year old trees nothing fancy no big names no fancy super old trees um but it's blended with like eight different Bulong villages, and it's good. It's really, really good. 357 gram cake, mm. 35 bucks. Yeah, and it's very reasonable. It's awesome. I mean, it's just like it, it, it becomes something larger than, than what it was because the guy who blended it, he really knows what he's doing. Hmm. I like that. So it's kind of like the recipe itself amplifies the ingredients, right? So not only is yeah. uh, not only the base material is good, but... It, the mastery of knowing when and how much to use adds this another layer of, of uh, complexity to the tea. And, yeah, yeah this is really delicious. Um, yeah. So you guys do a couple things. You guys do a lot of tastings with other people. And yeah. the other thing you guys have, which I think is really cool, is you have a good variety of sort of like young shang, older shang, some ripe poor and stuff like that. Uh, what, what do you think, is this like what you would call a good example of like a shang with some age like if yeah. you're showing this to yeah, someone yeah abs yeah absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely especially especially for the uh for the price and, and where it's at it's a really i think it's a really good example of a uh of a shang pu'er that's been humid stored you know about a decade i mean you had you had another five or ten years on this and, and this cake is going to be significantly more expensive every single time we try to buy it like i mentioned earlier it's it's like 10 percent more expensive like every single time we try to buy it and um yeah it just it makes it hard to actually like buy it because then we have to consider still selling it it just gets more and more expensive every time we buy it yeah so. and every year the flavor change a lot like last year we tried it the beginning still you know smokiness a little bit bitterness and stringent so this year those the quality has been removed a lot of it the age really changed the flavor cool well um, if so, if folks want to check out you guys. What would be the best place to do that? How would they best get in touch with you? Crimsonlotustea dot com. That's cool. it. You guys have a whole bunch of stuff. We'll let you guys check that out. We're running a little bit short on our time. Yeah. Check us out on tdb dot org. If you'd like this video, like it down below. We never say that. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're awesome. These guys are awesome. Subscribe to their stuff. And maybe, just maybe, you might see them again on TDB. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Cheers.